Today on the newscast, Israel says Iran and its proxies are planning a major Ramadan terror offensive. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast, coming to you today from New York City. And folks, we've got a lot to discuss. We've got an exclusive interview I just did in Northern Israel earlier this month, breaking down who Hezbollah is, their military capabilities, what they have planned for Israel and what comes next to the north. Before we get to that interview, a quick update. Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant is warning that during the upcoming Ramadan holiday that the Iranian regime, Hezbollah and Hamas are planning what he called phase two of October 7th. Now, Ramadan kicks off on March 10th and Gallant says that the Iranian regime will look to activate and energize its proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, of course, but look, folks, in particular to Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, the biblical heartland, and also, of course, the city of Jerusalem. Now, remember, Hamas's attack of Israel on October 7th, this offensive against Israel, that invasion, they deemed it Al-Aqsa flood. It's all about Jerusalem at the end of the day. It's all about the Al-Aqsa mosque. And during Ramadan, Israeli officials are concerned that Hamas, the Iranian regime, will look to stir things up atop the Temple Mount once again. To call it the second phase of October 7th, folks, is a very, very strong statement. That shows you how concerned Israel is about Ramadan this year. So we will be keeping a very close eye on that. Of course, Israel will as well. We want to go down now to northern Israel, my interview with Sarit Sahavi. Quick mention before I do, hey, number one, if you have not subscribed to the Watchman News channel, be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube. Click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. We are fast approaching 900,000 subscribers, folks. Hard to believe. We would love to hit 1 million this year, not for our glory or, or our edification, but the more people that see these videos, the more the truth gets out for such a time as this. So be sure to like and share. One more quick programming note. You know about our new nightly show, Stackelbeck Tonight, debuting on TBN March 25th, but also we just launched the Stackscast, my brand new podcast. We have wide-ranging conversations with fascinating people talking about their faith, their testimony, their journey. Episode one was none other than WWE legend Hulk Hogan. Episode two just went up yesterday. Look, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts, you can get it. The Stacks cast, Sage Steele, former ESPN anchor, talking about how she defeated cancel culture. You will want to check that out. Of course, We'll also post the clips here, the vodcast version, on our YouTube channel as well. But be sure to subscribe on Apple and Spotify. Okay, without further ado, to the Upper Galilee, not far from the Lebanon border, with our good friend Sarit Zahavi of the Alma Research and Education Center, giving us an incredible breakthrough of who Hezbollah is and what they want, what comes next. She is a foremost expert, folks, in the world on the Hezbollah threat. Take a look. I'm at the Alma Research and Education Center, and I have to tell you, Sarit, you're my go-to for all things happening in the North right now, in particular the Hezbollah threat. You're going to show us, give us an up-close look at what's happening in Lebanon right now. Do you want to lead the way? So this is uh, the map of actually the northern borders of Israel. You can see the blue line, which is the border between Israel and Lebanon. You can see Golan Heights and the border between Israel and Syria. But actually what is interesting in this map is the demography, is the colors. Yeah. Because the, the yellow goes for uh, Muslim Shiites, and you can see that's the majority of the population in South Lebanon. The green goes for Sunni Muslims, which are the majority of the population in the Syria and Golan Heights. And in Israel, in the Galilee, it's mixed. You have everybody, you have Jews, Muslims, Druze, Christians, mixed cities. And actually the area that we are in, which is this area in the mm -hmm. Western Galilee, it's a good example that people can actually live together. Sarit, you mentioned the Shia in southern Lebanon. Sadly, today, when I think of the Shia in southern Lebanon, I think of Hezbollah. Now, you are a foremost expert on that Hezbollah threat. We may be on the brink of war right now between Israel and Hezbollah. First of all, for everyone watching, can you lay out the capabilities of Hezbollah? This is a formidable foe. 
Look, we are bordering Hezbollah. We have communities which are right at the border, I mean inches away from Hezbollah. On the other side of the border, we are threatened by, uh, I can say, mainly two different kinds of threats. The first is the aerial one, meaning rockets, missiles, drones, accurate missiles, anti-tank missiles, which are, since the war started, are launched not against tanks. They are launched against civilians. They are launched against homes. You can see the damages around us. 500 homes were already damaged in all these communities on the border. 500. 500 this homes. This is since the October. Side, yeah, since, since October, October 8th. 8. Yes. Yes. So the day after the Hamas massacre in the south, yes. Hezbollah launched this in, on October Hezbollah 8th. Hezbollah yeah. joined in. Yes gradually intensifying the amounts of attacks every day, not only Hezbollah, also Hamas from Lebanon and Islamic Jihad, but most of the attacks Hezbollah claimed responsibility for, publicly, proud of hitting Israeli civilian towns. Proud of not even denying it. Okay, that's one threat that's been going on and we feel like we are being hunted by these anti-tank accurate missiles of Hezbollah every day over here up north every day and Iron Dome is not effective against these anti-tank missiles because they are directly shot. It's for uh, distances to up to 10 kilometers and uh, they are very, very accurate. Uh, other than that, the second problem is Radwan brigades. Radwan brigades are thousands of Hezbollah military operatives that were trained to invade into Israel. Actually, the offensive plan that was executed by Hamas, including the idea of taking hostages to become human shield, was published as an offensive plan of Hezbollah a decade ago. And Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, has talked about invading the Galilee. Nasrallah talked in about invading years. the Galilee many times. Yeah. He didn't even deny it, that this is what he trains his own uh, terrorists to do, and they are planning to get into the communities and to attack civilian Israelis. They would like to not only duplicate, they would like to surpass the carnage of October 7th, and Hezbollah is a much more powerful force than Hamas. Yes, the firepower of Hezbollah that I've described is 10 times more than the Hamas firepower, meaning that they have 10 times more missiles, not including the anti-tanks, which nobody knows how much they have, not only in South Lebanon, but everywhere in Lebanon, based inside civilian infrastructure in Lebanon, putting the Lebanese as human shields as well. They're using homes in southern yes, Lebanon uh, to launch homes, rockets. schools, Hariri airport, under the homes, mosques, public buildings. Now, the anti-tank missiles, obviously a major, major problem, Sarit. Uh, we know that Hezbollah over the years has dug terror tunnels as well, just as in Gaza. Different terrain here, but they also have the tunnel intention. How many rockets and missiles roughly does Hezbollah possess right now? So to answer your question, I want to show you the amounts. Okay. These are the amounts of rockets that in the, the arsenal of Hezbollah. By the way, it's not only in South Lebanon. It's in various places in Lebanon. Okay, South Lebanon, Beirut and the Baqa Valley, in the areas that are under the control of Hezbollah, because there is Shiite po Muslim population there, that Hezbollah actually controls by huge civilian systems that replace the Lebanese government. Hezbollah okay. is pretty much sorry, the most powerful force in Lebanon. Yes. The and entire not, country. Not, not just... only because of this unbelievable arsenal, but, but also because of its civilian infrastructure. Now, so as, break this down, yes, if you can. This is... Uh, mortars. Mortars are for short ranges, I don't know, around 15 kilometers tops if they are positioned on the borderline itself. Most of this arsenal of mortars was meant to be used for against an IDF invasion into Lebanon. But even if you just assume it's 10 percent, and many of these were already launched to Israel since this conflict started, many of these. They are launched against Israel as well into the Israeli territories, but they are also meant to be launched against an IDF invasion. This is 65,000, then can get to various ranges of tens, tens of kilometers from the borderline. In Israeli terms, it means Haifa, okay? The third largest city in Israel. The, the third largest city, a seaport yeah. in Haifa as well. These two are inaccurate. And what are these, 65,000, is that rockets? Rockets. Yeah, okay, okay. They are considered rockets. Mm -hmm. There are 5,000 more to a distances of around 200 kilometers. 200 kilometers from the border, that's Jerusalem. Understand. Wow. It's important to, to understand how small Israel is, okay? And the size five, of the state of New Jersey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. roughly. And, and 5,000 more 
are even to greater distances that can you know cover all of the state of Israel. From all of these there is small amount of probably a few hundreds which are uh, considered pre-GMs, precision guided missiles. And that is a game changer for Hezbollah, those PGMs. It is Explain a game, why. It is a game changer and Asala himself said it, that it, it will target military and civilian infrastructures in Israel, the Knesset, uh, uh, malls, water desalination, gas rigs, everything. He, he just gave a list of everything he's going to target in an interview a few years ago. And this is also a problem because these are 2,000 drones. Now drones are a global threat. Drones, Iranian drones, are the ones who are bombing in Ukraine in the hands of the Russians. Yeah. Iranian drones are the ones who killed American soldiers in Jordan. Iranian drones are the ones who are attacking by the Houthis in the Red Sea. And Iranian drones were provided to Venezuela threatening Miami. This is a global threat. This is the amount of drones in the hands of Hezbollah, maybe even more. And they already used them against Israel in the current war. Some of them succeeded to pass our aerial defense systems and fell in, inside the Israeli bases, inside the Israeli military base as well. Yeah, uh, Sarit, a few things. Number one, Iran is clearly the head of the snake. We'll talk about that more in a second. Secondly, we've seen several Israeli civilians and soldiers killed in these engagements with Hezbollah since yes. October 8th. Do you get the sense that Israel, though, has also made some progress in weakening Hezbollah since October in these engagements? I want to talk about it. This is an important question because what we see, and yesterday uh, the IDF spokesperson addressed that as well. What we see in the past uh, few weeks is a more proactive approach by the IDF. Trying to prevent a full-scale war, but at the same time gaining a military achievement with uh, damaging the uh, capabilities of Hezbollah. Will this succeed? I am not sure, and I'm a resident of the Gali. I'm personally threatened by the capabilities I've described. I don't know if, if uh, it, it passes through camera, but Israel has changed since October 7th. I, I was never afraid. I'll show you photos. These are, these are photos of Hezbollah military operatives that I took meters away from them, all over the borderline with Lebanon during the past year. Their positions, you know, they were taking photos of me. They were threatening me. I was never afraid. I never went with a gun. I never went with a gun. Today, every morning when I get up, I think what I can do next to my personal security. Yeah. And you've got a family. And I have a family. It's a different situation. It's something that we've never experienced because I, I knew everything about the capabilities of Hezbollah. I knew about the yeah. invasion plan. I always strongly believed that very quickly they will be stopped. Now I understand that this is impossible. The only way to stop them is to make sure they cannot do it. Yeah, and I guess that's a big question, Street. as we watch, and they have this massive arsenal that you just laid out. And by the way, the Hezbollah operative who took photos of you, our team experienced a similar situation. I entered a Hezbollah tunnel with the IDF, yeah, and we had a Hezbollah operative taking pictures of us, trying to intimidate us. Exactly. But the ultimate answer here seems to be that Hezbollah must be crushed, decisively defeated, or else those tens of thousands of Israelis who've had to evacuate their homes in the north can't return home. Look, the biggest uh, dilemma of the Israeli government today is how to balance what you just said, okay, the need to eliminate the threat, I will put it this way, and on the other hand, to avoid another front, another full-scale front, yeah. and we discuss the capabilities of Hezbollah, the IDF is trying, as I've said, to maximize the military achievement without getting to a full-scale war, but it is willing to take the risk, totally. And preparations were made, and we have three divisions that are deployed in the northern border, in the Lebanese border, actually. And this is, uh, wow, like in routine, it's one division. So now it's three divisions that are deployed here, military deployed here, and daily attacks, the same way there are daily attacks by Hezbollah against us, and they started that. IDF is also attacking in Lebanon, to be honest with you. People are evacuated in South Lebanon as well, except they were not evacuated by their government. The government doesn't care. They are evacuated uh, uh, voluntarily. The problem is that the culture is very different. 
while we cherish life, they cherish death. How do you disarm a, a terrorist army that is entrenched in the population, that in every third home in South Lebanon, in these Shiite towns here, you have missiles? Every third home. Every third home is used for military purposes of Hezbollah. IDF already uh, attacked 40 headquarters of Hezbollah since this war started. Most of these headquarters are inside homes. What it's, it's a conundrum. Uh, as you said, Sreet, how do you neutralize this threat? They live there. Last question along those lines. Number one, you mentioned Iran throughout our talk here. What can be done about the Iranian regime? Whether it's the Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, the militias in Syria and Iraq, they are indeed the head of the snake. And secondly, hey, you're a resident, obviously, of the north, of the Galilee, and the way this is going, do you think a war with Hezbollah seems unavoidable? I want to talk about it, okay, because I wouldn't call it the head of the snake, I would call it the head of the octopus. And this is very important, because the head of the snakes implies on a, on a chain of command. Octopus has different arms. You have an arm in West Bank, and an arm in Yemen, and an arm in Lebanon, and an arm in Syria, and an arm in Iraq, and I don't know where else. And that way, you can activate each arm in a different way, in a different timing, in a different level, in a different scale of war. What we have seen since October 7th happening is that the campaign that is uh, described in this propaganda video of Iran actually started. Iran decided and, and it declared that it's going to do it. And what are we watching here, by the way, Sri? This, this is... is a propaganda video of Iran from last April that says very, very clearly, we are planning a multi-front campaign against the state of Israel by all these militias from various places in the Middle East. This is what it says. That, that's it. Okay, it's a very clear message. And they started a campaign. This is, is in this picture you can see the different militias that appear in the video. Probably there are more. Okay, <laughs> these are the militias in the video. You can understand how much money they get from the IRGC. And I, I want to dedicate a minute for the Houthis because the Houthis are in, in their, in their uh, logo. It's death to America, death to Israel, a curse upon the Jews, which is the same sentences that you hear in the funerals of Hezbollah military operatives in Lebanon. Yeah. It's Just all tied example. together. Oh, yeah. It's and, all tied together. And this is a great example, the Houthi threat, Sarit, of why this matters to every American. Because right now, the U.S. military is tangling with the Houthis in Yemen, in the Red Sea. That's why I'm saying it's one yeah. campaign. Israel is perceived by the IRGC as the long arm of the United States. Yeah, United Israel's States. the first line of defense for the West. Israel is the first. And, and unfortunately, we don't feel that the West understands that because when I'm being interviewed, the banner in the screen is Israel Hamas war. This is not about the Israeli Palestinian conflict. The Iranians couldn't care less about the Palestinians. Right. And what they had just done was to sacrifice the Gazians. Yeah. And they plan to do it. Thanks again to our good friend Sarit Zahavi for that incredible breakdown. Folks, you see the information there on your screen. Be sure to check out her great work at Alma. No one does it better when it comes to explaining Hezbollah, again, what they want and what must be done to stop them. Great stuff from our good friend Sarit Zahavi. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.